Public Q and A presence ask Reddit question. What's an etiquette you wish more people knew of and followed? Do not lean on someone else's wheelchair or help by pushing it without asking. It's ridiculous how many strangers do that to my wheelchair. Wait. People start pushing you without asking. Yep, happens to my spouse all the time. Had a good drinking buddy in college who was in a wheelchair. People would do this to him fairly often. We had a fairly large friend who would grab those people by the back of the shoulders and steer them around for a while. Amazing how many people didn't understand how similar those actions are. I need to find me a friend like that. I am the biggest in my group and I am the wheelie one. Good friend. All the time. As often as Abled's tell chair users that they're inspirational for doing ordinary life. Check out the Twitter hashtag Abled's are weird for all the shit disabled people have to deal with. Ah. Inspiration porn. I hate all that. As someone with an unseen disability and a minor physical one, I occasionally get told I have been inspiring. Whatever I tend to say. I am just doing my thing. I cannot be bothered banging on about all this. Sort yourself out. It does not play well, I find. I think I am supposed to be grateful. At my job as a tutor, we have a policy about working with students with disabilities. Don't attempt to move a student in a walker or wheelchair, etc. One thing we were taught is that the wheelchair is an extension to that person's body. It's the same as touching someone without their permission or consent. Not to block the doorway when people are exiting a large gathering. Person in front of you walks into the store, stops immediately after entering to look around, oftentimes with a grocery cart blocking the entire path. Move. It's even worse when they do this on a subway when the doors are about to close. Don't block the subway stairs ever, but especially don't stop to look at your phone. If you do this you are a steaming pile of shit human. Or when people walk through a doorway or up an escalator, or whatever then stop right in front of it figuring out where to go. Move to the side then go on your merry way once you know. This doubly goes for people who do it in the middle of the footpath. Especially when the band are packing up. The amount of times I have had to hit people with a drum rack or speaker to get them to move is unreal. Ask them to move and they'll move right back to the doorway. I naturally hate large crowds, but was my cousin's roadie for a long time, and even loading up using a back entrance or exit I have run into that shit every time. Took me a while to learn to speak up with authority and tell them to move. Just don't block doorways period. Please. As a person trained in room clearing through the military, this straight triggers me as a civilian. Took months to fight the instinct of grabbing a shoulder and pushing through them. Came here to say this. Doorways and stairwells, keep moving. Spatial awareness don't stop in the middle of aisles or sidewalks to look at or for things, move out of the way so people can get around you and anything else you're standing by. Spatial awareness. My mom is that person who leaves her cart in the middle of the grocery aisle while she carefully reads nutrition labels and does head math. Despite coming back from space and finding herself to be obstructing traffic several times a day and offering subsequent apologies, she has yet to learn this awareness. And I seem to be the person who's going opposite to her every fucking aisle. On the third time of asking them to move their cart, I am not even bothering with the tone of forced politeness anymore. I shouldn't have to ask the same person on multiple grocery trips. I fantasize about bringing squirt bottles with me for exactly that purpose. Ill ask nicely once, maybe twice. After that you must be trained. Pick up a newspaper, roll it up and hit them with it. Let people off before trying to get in. Use for elevators, trains etc. 
Yes. So many damn people create a bottleneck on buses because they are trying to shove their way in while a dozen people are trying to get off. If you get piss on the toilet seat in public bathrooms, wipe it up. I work in a mall. You truly do see some of the worst of humanity in the bathrooms. I went inside a cubicle once and it looked like they peed everywhere but the bowl. Like if you got a couple of drops on the seat, then okay, maybe I can forgive you. But I am talking piss drenching the entire seat, and a little on the floor. I just know the little fuck who did it did it on purpose, and probably felt good about it too. I had to ask the cleaning lady to clean it for me, and I felt bad the entire time, because her first reaction was a loud gasp followed by. Ideos ko, sino naman gumawa naito. Oh my god, now who could have done this? There is no coming back from that. Whoever did that is eternally a fucking troglodyte, who needs to be immediately taken out of the fabric of existence in my eyes. If it makes you feel worse, there are people who purposefully piss anywhere but the bowl. We had a few at my old job, and it was fucked. My first job had a couple of shower poopers. They installed cameras all around the entrance to the communal showers, but still had a hard time nailing them down. When I left, they were discussing putting independent badge readers on the shower stalls to get hot water. One of my jobs had a girl leave a bloody tampon in the communal shower's soap dish. Management didn't do anything about it, and the cleaning staff refused to move it, so we just took the whole soap dish off the wall and threw it away. Never figured out who did it, but we had some pretty strong guesses. I saw justice once, I worked at Macy's and the cleaning lady had been cleaning the stalls when someone came in and used the one she had just finished cleaning. The lady left it dirty and threw her used pad on the floor. The cleaning lady ripped her a new asshole, called her out on being dirty on having a designer bag and her hair done and yet leaves a dirty pad on the floor. The lady got so embarrassed she ran out without washing her hands. I cannot understand how people are not on the same page when it comes to urinating. I worked at a Planet Fitness but only briefly because customers kept pissing in trash cans that were in the tanning rooms. Like who thinks it's okay to piss in a trash can? I complained to management and they said, there's nothing we can do. Bullshit. Remove the trash cans. Put wire basket bins with no bags. Track down the filthy bastards and ban them. I tried to explain that dealing with urine was biohazard. One manager even emptied the bins without gloves on. I would fucking gag. I ran a gym for a decade. You'd just be cleaning piss off the tanning bed floor. We got rid of ours after the millionth heroin needle or used condom. PF has the corporate overlords though. Those managers are just checklist managers. They're not there to make decisions. If you're using an acronym or initialism, spell it out in its entirety the first time you use it with the acronym or initialism in parentheses behind it. For example, the United States Department of Agriculture USDA is responsible for the safety of most meat. The USDA does not monitor dietary supplements. Yes, you can Google it, but then I have to stop reading. Also, acronyms or initialisms can vary by country and oftentimes there can be more than one meaning. To add to this, don't assume people will know what acronyms mean in conversation. We have so many different acronyms and jargon terms at my work a supermarket, and everyone just assumes that you know each one despite the stupid lack of formal training. Also about half of these words describe simple processes that don't need keywords, but that's another issue I mean honestly, it's shelf presentation, just call it presentation, not fucking rumble. There was a Reddit post I was reading recently that made me laugh because of the use of an acronym Ed wasn't such a funny topic because they were discussing a girl with an eating disorder, but I couldn't figure out why the poor girl was suffering from erectile dysfunction. Ed equals emergency department, erectile dysfunction, eating disorder, plus probably many more. ED is also an acronym for executive director in many municipal programs. Hearing about contractors having run-ins with the ED is brutal. 
My roommate has a bunch of military friends, and after a while, I just start tuning out the conversation if there just reaches a critical number of acronyms or initialisms that make things unintelligible, even with context. There's AP5 looking at rocks from the new JBL. And all of us just told him, who do you think you are, some P3? You got to put in time on the ILM before you can request at 90. Everyone at the table but me laughs. Speaking of P5's Zako and his wife recently came into our office wanting a bump in our TIs without talking to his commander, and I don't outrank the guy, but the SAR does, and when he got wind that a P5 was trying to do and run around on him by going to me, that resulted in him losing overtime and the PRT he was hoping to get before Christmas. More laughter from everyone but me. Probably good I am not you, I would have taken the piss like yeah, I was dealing with this D20 last week. He was being real difficult with me then I threw him across the room for max charisma, or some shit, ick I don't play DND. It's completely wrong, but honestly it's better for it. Take my upvote, pal. Bullying your D20 for giving you bad rolls is totally plausible. Just change for max charisma to on a charisma check and you're perfect. OMG yes. I sat baffled during a board discussion about fundraising methods and return on investment ROI. I was a criminal defense lawyer at the time. To us, ROI means record of interview. Don't assume acronyms are universal yes, I did eventually work out that ROI in this context was return on investment. But it took about 40 minutes of me wondering WTF they were talking about for me to get it. Being new to Reddit there's an entire culture of acronyms for every subreddit, and it's virtually never explained. Military people and parent advice forums are the worst about this. I was super amazed at how many trans men were having babies in my pregnancy groups until I realized that FTM meant first time mom and not female to male. DH would disagree. Also avoid using them when they can be confusing. Had a big text on personality disorders to read that used BPD to refer to bipolar disorder. In a passage about borderline personality disorder. For real. Totally grinds my gears when people can't be bothered to type out words on Reddit. Sorry for not living your specific life, internet stranger, how about you save most of us some Google research and just type out your obscure acronym. Not to mention the ones with double meaning. You never know if it's someone's erectile dysfunction or eating disorder that's ruining their life. Worse for me is when I ask what that means and people say Google it or some shit. I could Google it. I could spend a while searching the links and hoping it's the thing you mean in story. Or I could ask you, since you're already here, and understand what you said in exactly the context you meant it. You don't start telling someone a story in real life and roll your eyes when they ask for clarification because you have a phone, look it up. Oh my god this. Looking at you military folks. Don't be a hog with free food. I used to work as a manager in a factory, and I bought the team of 33 people about 25 pizzas. It cost over 200 bucks to feed them, and we had enough for everyone to have for slices half a pizza, and then some more afterwards if needed. I had stretched the budget as far as it could go so I couldn't buy any more pizzas with the work credit card. I asked everyone to grab half a pizza each and most people did. Then I watched a few of the guys search through every box and find the four biggest slices they could find. They literally flipped every box of pizza to find every larger slice. One of them had basically a whole pizza by doing this with some larger than normal slices. Now fair game I did say for slices but they went out of their way to do it. They ate those and were back for more before anyone else had another go and we ran out of food pretty quickly. I ended up going and buying another 5 pizzas with my own money and giving them to the guys who only had a small go at it. And on same vein about human seagulls. If it's agreed that everyone brings something, then don't show up empty-handed. If you are busy or don't know how to cook or bake, 
then just bring wine, beer, snacks or box of chocolate. If gathering includes host, then remember to thank them and tell your dietary restrictions when host asks before, not just right before food is served. Tell your dietary restrictions when host asks before, not just right before food is served. Such a huge one. But another thing to add, if you're hosting an event and guests come to you before the event with their dietary restrictions and allergies please write it down and remember it when preparing food and asking people to bring dishes. I've got a severe peanut or nut and seafood or fish allergy and there's been too many times where I have told people ahead of time to watch for my allergies and they still prepare some seafood side dish or make the dessert with nuts and then get pissy with me when I state I am allergic and can't eat it and that everyone needs to proceed with caution with said dish or there could be some cross contamination and I could die. Like boy, do I ever have stories for you. It's extremely rude to ask someone for their allergies and then for you to completely ignore them and treat that person like an inconvenience when you already asked if there would be any issue. This really irritates me. We get flu shots at work, and the employee health clinic puts out a bucket of lollipops to sweeten the sting. Last year a woman put a fistful in her pocket for the grandkids. Your grandchildren don't work here, lady. Before COVID, I had a candy dish at my desk for clients to take a piece while they wait for their lawyer, I'm a receptionist, and I had things like mints and chocolates in there and sometimes, I would have fancier wrapped candy in there like Jolly Ranchers. And legit, people did the same BS. Take giant handfuls for the grandchildren like woman, go to Walmart and buy your own fucking candy for the kids. I used to purposely keep track of who did that, and I would make sure the dish was next to empty when they came in so they couldn't take it all. That reminds me of when I was a cashier at a place that had the take a penny, leave a penny trays. Whenever the one at my register had a lot, I took most of them out and kept them behind the register where customers couldn't see them and refilled it as needed. There for situations like when your total is 10, 0, 1 and you don't want to break a 20 and have a handful of loose change. They're not for when your total is 9, 37 and you grab the entire contents of the tray, count it and find it's only 36 cents and ask me if I have an extra penny for you. Yo I worked at a coffee shop one time, where a customer literally started digging through our tip jar to pay for her order, and I was dumbfounded. Like who fucking raised you, Jesus Christ. If it's the tip jar, that's theft. I used to work at a cafe with a lady who was the worst for that, except it was for her husband. We had a few really lovely regular customers that would bring us a box of chocolates around the holidays and each time she'd say something oh husband loves those and talented a big handful your fucking grown as husband can buy his own damn ferrara roche ugh people who do this make themselves look so cheap a guy at my office does this every time the boss decides to bring in duncan on fridays pre covid our office has 30 people and the boss will buy us two of those box ojos and we have K-Cups from decent brands in the office anyway so we don't even need the coffee, a dozen donuts, a dozen bagels, and a box of donut holes. The implication is that you're supposed to pick one of those three things to eat, not three donuts and three bagels just for yourself and half the damn coffee, Hank. OMG my old office was like this. At the slightest hint of free food, people would act like hyenas. I could leave a half-eaten sandwich and day old chips on the break room table and people would fight for it. I feel self-conscious if I am even going for a second slice at work. How greedy are people? During the remnants of a hurricane, my boss bought 50 pizzas for about 250 people so that no one would have to leave the building for lunch. A few people took whole pizzas before everyone ate saying, now I don't have to cook tonight. If watching or listening to something on public transport, wear some goddamn earphones. I don't want to listen to someone else's garbage. To add to this, your music will always be rubbish to others so please don't turn it up to the point they can hear it. Do not take this personally for this is not an indictment of your taste, nor the artist. 
Even the most wonderful masterpiece in the world sounds like amateur hour out the wrong end of a speaker. Okay let me add here, and what I find stupid and annoying. Don't face time with people in public is annoying. Re return your shopping cart to the return stall. Don't leave it in a parking spot. Don't put it in the bushes. Don't push it till the security will locks up at the edge of the parking lot don't let it go in the middle of the lot to roll wildly across the lanes just to hit cars randomly. And take your garbage with you. Including masks. What you do with your shopping cart is a litmus test for how shitty a person you are. I had one of my greatest subreddit that happened moments involving a shopping cart. This lady was parked along the edge of the lot and just left her cart by the grass curb and got in her car. I walked over with my cart while she was still sitting in her car, got her cart and put it with mine and stared her down the entire time as I walked them both back to the cart corral. The shopping cart dilemma is a good test of someone's altruism. You are no required to bring back the shopping cart. You will not be punished for not bringing it back. You will not be personal rewarded for bringing it back in any way. It costs you an insignificant amount of time and energy to bring it back. It is undoubtedly a good thing for society to bring it back. My husband will flip a cart on its side to keep it from rolling into other cars. Would it not be easier just to bring it to the cart corral? Setting a timer for the damn washing machine and not leaving it full all day. In the dorm laundry room if you did not stay on top of your laundry, it was likely to be dumped on the folding counter in a sad pile. Some good evil Samaritans would put your laundry into the dryer, but many of my clothing items were hang dry. When I was a freshman in college, there was a pile of clothes that sat in a sad and lonely pile on the folding table for three days. The washing machines were in the communal kitchen, so it was the biggest subject of conversation in our dorm for days. Everyone, including myself, was like who the fuck could forget half their clothes for three days, walking past them every time they washed a dish or made toast, and never realize. The answer was me. They were my clothes and I am an idiot. When debating, don't assume or put words in someone's mouth. Clarify instead. Agree with what you agree, and disagree with what you disagree and explain why. If you were incorrect, acknowledge it. These days people are valued by the amount of opinions they have. I think we should not form premature opinions. Be always open to being proven wrong or learning things you didn't expect were true. The only way to really be sure about a truth is by being open to being wrong all the time. If a belief withstands every evidence that exists, then it's probably fair to say it's true. Love this. They may not be saying what you think they're saying, so clarify before countering. Also, don't debate if you aren't willing to even consider the other side. Save everyone the headache. Chew with your damn mouth closed, no one wants to eat next to someone while their lips are smacking and bits of food start flying out, it's very disgusting. And gum. I had to share an office with a 60-year-old woman who chewed gum with her mouth open. I had such violent fantasies about her I scared myself. This. Some of friends eat with their mouths open, and when I ask them not to because the sound is so horrible to me I get this feeling like I am being demanding or rude by asking them. I was always brought up that chewing with your mouth closed is polite and considerate, I don't understand how they've made it to adulthood with this bad habit. Misophonic. I often eat alone and can't tune out other people. Take your rubbish home and don't litter. Basic human life skill. Damn it drives me mad. My first award, thank you. You've literally brought this shit in something capable of holding it, put it back in, and take it the fuck with you. When exiting a tight space such as an elevator or a single doorway let everybody exit or get off before getting on. 
I hate when people try to shoulder their way onto an elevator or into a room when people are still coming out. This drives me crazy on the train. Arg. I hate when people do it on the bus especially because you can very obviously look through the window and see the line of people waiting to get off. Also, don't stand next to the elevator door and tell me, a woman, to go first. I know you're trying to be a gentleman, but if I have to scoot past you, it's uncomfortable for me. I don't like to be forced into her personal space. Just go and we'll all get there faster. LOL. Using your blinkers when driving. Forget about it being the law, it's the responsible and courteous thing to do. Don't just cut over with no warning. And also, when you are stopped at a red light on a steep uphill incline, please don't pull up right to my bumper. Some of us drive manual, and it's incredibly annoying. Ugh, I used to know someone who claimed that he didn't need to use turn signals because he was a good enough driver not to need them. Like, no man, you are a worse driver because you don't signal. It isn't even about being a bad driver it's about being a completely discourteous ass wipe. And use them before you intend to turn or merge. They are meant to indicate your future intent, not just reinforce what I am already seeing. It boggles my mind how many people treat having their turn signal on as giving them the right of way to stuff their vehicle into the following distance in front of me. Put your phone down when talking to someone. It is so weird when my family is having dinner, and the only ones not on phones are the children. But yeah, I completely agree. I was going to go to the cinema with someone, and for 45 minutes on the bus stop he was just on his phone half listening, so I just said fuck it and left. It is so weird when my family is having dinner, and the only ones not on phones are the children. Stuck living at home with parents cause quarantine. I am the only one in the house who doesn't have my phone on me at all times. My dad will send me texts or call my mom to ask when she's coming downstairs for dinner when we are all at home. Because apparently walking over to someone's room and talking to them face to face is apparently too much trouble. My dad will send me texts or call my mom to ask when she's coming downstairs for dinner when we are all at home. Because apparently walking over to someone's room and talking to them face to face is apparently too much trouble. At least it's a step up from two people shouting at each other across a house despite neither really hearing what the other is saying. Because yes, apparently walking to someone when you want to speak to them hasn't been a thing since the post-war era. Ironic how they used to warn us about addiction and punish us for it. Now they're the ones getting clickbaited and consuming brain damaging content on Facebook 16 hours a day. This. My mom yelling get off the internet at 13 year old me is forever stuck in my brain, but now look who is constantly on their iPad scrolling through Facebook for hours a day. This is especially true if you are the only one constantly on your phone in a group setting. Occasionally it's cool to scroll during downtime with your friends or family, but you shouldn't be the only one who can't disconnect. Also, don't try to share your dumb videos or memes with your group if they are having a good time living their actual lives and not on their phones. I think people try to justify their screen obsession by pulling others in like, OMG, you've got to see this. My future brother-in-law is constantly on his phone, and trying to pull the closest person in the group in to watch the video or see the meme he's cackling about. It's so disruptive and never funny to other people, especially out of context or when you aren't in that headspace. The family member will always try to laugh a bit politely but then try to rejoin the group as quickly as possible. He also speaks in memes. Something will happen in real life and hell say that awkward moment when insert common thing and you insert reaction. Ugh. Please don't touch me. Especially if I am pregnant. You don't get to touch the bump, strange person I don't know. Also, don't get offended when I don't want to be physically comforted when going through a rough time. 
Pats, hugs and those little arm touches just make my adrenaline pump. Yep, not everyone wants a hug. I'll admit I am a hugger but I respect that a lot of people aren't. You do you. Zipper merging when going from two lanes of traffic to one. It's so easy but so many don't get it. Or not speeding up when changing lanes. Match or exceed the speed of the lane you're going into. Making the guy behind you tap his brakes is what slowly turns into those random slowdowns in some random spot for no reason. And speeding up to match highway traffic speeds to merge. That's literally what on ramps are for. If you slow down to a crawl when the highway traffic is going fast you won't ever be able to merge and the people behind you are forced to slow down too. Personal space. Stay out of my personal space. 4. Keep away from my personal space. 5. Get out of that personal space. I don't even want this skin in my personal space. When using an escalator the right side is for PPL, who just want to coast and chill, and the left side is for PPL, who are in a hurry, and want to walk up it. Whereas in Australia, the left side is for passive passengers and the right side for the rush. Same with stairs. Keep left. The actual rule is to use the same side as the road or footpath. There are a few exceptions cough, Osaka but it's usually a bizarre point of local pride so you'll be very, very well informed. Crazy Brits stand on the right and walk on the left, even though they drive on the left and overtake in the right lane. This differs by region so pay attention and adjust when traveling. It will usually be whatever side that people drive on. It isn't random. Web address I am from Canada and I went to England on a school trip, and none of us knew this until a tour guide told us. Now I always stand on the right side naturally, and getting annoyed when my friends who weren't on the trip don't stand on the right, even though no one's walking up. When you're driving, the left lane is for passing, not for going the exact same speed as the guy in the car right next to you. To add to this, if you are in the fast or passing lane, and another car comes up on you, just move over. No matter how fast you are going the other driver wants to go faster. No need for road rage or to control freeway speeds, just get out of the crazy person's way. Arg. In addition, if you're in the right lane and going slowly enough that someone is passing you, don't suddenly realize it and react by speeding up to their level so they can't pass without flooring it or slowing down and getting back behind you. Yeah I can't stand people like that. I mean sometimes I get past and just notice my speed I usually use cruise control though so doesn't happen much, but let the person pass then speed up. Heck sometimes I'll speed up afterward because so many are passing I figure I must be the one who is wrong, go with the flow of traffic and if some is faster let it by. To add to this, if you are in the fast or passing lane and another car comes up on you, just move over unless it is physically impossible. This isn't etiquette, this is law. At least most states I have been in. I think you're right. I don't think I have ever seen it enforced though. But then again, most people move out of the way when a cop comes behind them. Wow. You are still with us. Thanks for being such a nice person. As long as you are here, why not like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also you can press the bell icon, so you won't miss any future uploads.